Welcome to lecture 12 on the topic of plant nutrition. This lecture is separated into two parts and this recording is part one. Lecture 12 is part of the subject plant physiology which is a component of the Bachelor of Agriculture and Technology degree. This degree is offered at both Melbourne Polytechnic and La Trobe University. Please visit our website at www.melbournepolytechnic.edu.au My name is Dr Nikki Cooley. The aim of this lecture is to understand the role of nutrients and the impact on plant health, particularly when nutrients become deficient. We will also, in part two, look at the impact of nutrient deficiency for agriculture and the role that nutrients will play in future climates. In part one, we will start with a definition and an overview of what a nutrient is. We will end this lecture by understanding that there are two nutrient classifications commonly used. We will review and learn about both of these classifications. Plant nutrition is defined as the study of chemical elements that are essential for plant growth. For an element to be described as essential, three criteria must be met. Firstly, a deficiency of the element makes it impossible for the plant to co complete its life cycle. Secondly, the deficiency is specific for the element in question. And thirdly, the element is directly involved in the nutrition of the plant, as for example, a constituent of an essential metabolite required for the action of an enzyme system. All the essential elements that plants require are inorganic. This differentiates them from humans, mammals and many microorganisms. There are 22 essential elements for which 17 are essential plant nutrients. Mineral nutrients are elements such as nitrogen, phosphate and potassium. After absorption by the roots, minerals are translocated into various parts of the plant and we dealt with this in solute transport lecture. Other organisms including mycorrhizal fungi and nitrogen fixing bacteria often participate in mineral acquisition. Plants are the traditional means of recycling animal waste and for removing deleterious minerals from waste dumps. Plant nutrition is a complex nature of plant-soil-atmosphere relationships. An essential element is one that is intrinsic component in the structural metabolism of a plant or whose absence causes severe abnormalities in growth development of re or reproduction. Three of the major essential elements are not mineral nutrients, and these are hydrogen, carbon and oxygen. Hydrogen is obtained by water. Carbon dioxide and oxygen are obtained from the atmosphere. As you can see from Table 1, the concentration of these essential elements that are not nutrients are very high. There are several classification mechanisms for nutrients and there is some debate about which one is best. I am going to present two of these to you today. The most common is according to the nutrient concentration which is acquired by the plant. These are separated into two main groups, the macronutrients and the micronutrients. The macronutrients are a are nutrients that are required in large amounts, while as the micronutrients are nutrients that are required in smaller amounts. A second method was proposed by Evans and Sorger in 1966, and then developed further by Mengel and Kirby in 2001, and this is based on the biochemical and the physiological functions, and these are separated into four groups. The second classification for nutrients are those that are defined by their biochemical function. They are separated into four groups. Table 5.2 deals with the first two groups. The first groups are nutrients that are part of the carbon compounds. So these include groups such as the amino acids, amines, proteins and nucleic acids. This group contains nitrogen and silica. 
Group 2 are our nutrients that are involved in the very important energy storage or structure integrity. So these are compounds that involve um, the cell wall, nucleic acids, sugar phosphates, nucleotides and coenzymes. Group 3 of this classification are the nutrients that remain in the ionic form in the plant. They have roles such as maintaining cell turgor and cell electroneutrality. Group 4 are involved in the redox reactions such as iron being required in proteins involved in photosynthesis. Please study these, these tables for more details on these roles. This concludes the end of part 1 mineral nutrients lecture. In the classification based on nutrient concentration, the macronutrients can be divided into two groups. There are the primary macronutrients and the secondary macronutrients. The primary macronutrients are perhaps the most familiar to most people. These consist of the nitrogen, phosphate and potassium groups. They are found in relatively higher concentrations in the soil and higher concentrations in the plant. The secondary macronutrients are not as important as the primary and these compose of calcium, magnesium and sulphur. They are again taken up by the plant in their ionic forms and their concentrations of the soil raise, range from 0.7 to 500 parts per million. Their concentrations in the plant typically range from 0.1 to 0.5. The micronutrients compose of a number of nutrients which are typically defined as, as being obtained in the plant in very low concentrations. Their concentration ranges from 100 parts per million to about 0.1 to 0.6 parts per million. The macronutrients compose of iron, magnesium, zinc, boron, copper, molybdenum, cobalt and chlorine. Some of these micronutrients can be obtained by the plant in several ionic forms, as in the iron. While they are found in smaller concentrations in the plant, one should not underestimate their significance. So essential mineral elements can be classified as micro or macronutrients according to the concentrations that they have in the plant. This is not always a clear distinction and there is some debate that exists around this form of classification. For this topic I'd like you to read the Taze and Zeiger recommended textbook Plant Physiology 5th edition, the chapter 5 on mineral nutrients which starts on page 67. Please take notes and insert them into your lecture notes here. So now that we have come to the end of this lecture once you have reviewed your lecture notes and your recommended reading, you should be able to do the following. Define a nutrient. Describe nutrients by both methods of classification that were presented. And you should be able to begin to understand and be able to describe some of the roles that nutrients play. This is the end of part one on Lecture 12, Plant Nutrition.